So I found myself bruised and nearly naked somewhere on a country road at the end edge of Navasgain County National Forest. I had no idea how I got there, nor did I have any idea what to do next. I found a note tucked in my underpants that said a man calling himself Noah had picked me up and carried me to where I was. Why he didn't take me to his shelter, I will never know. Noah had sketched a way to a trader post on the back of the note he had left me. So this was where I would go next, but not before looking around the area to see if I couldn't find any supplies. So I picked up a sturdy stick and fashioned myself a very primitive bow to defend myself against whatever awaited me on the way to the trading post. As I entered the building, I woke up next to a creature, there's no other way to describe it, a mere shell of a human trying to grab me and bite me, jumped at me from out of nowhere. I pummeled it to death with the stick I had just picked up. Searching the building, I found myself an old college jacket and some medical supplies. At least that would keep me a bit warm in the coming days. As the house was in shambles and I could not imagine staying there for the night, I started to make my way towards the trading post. As I was getting hungry, I whacked an unsuspecting chicken, probably escaped from its coop after humans had abandoned this area. Its feathers might make a good fletching for my arrows. I passed a few ruined houses in a small town and came upon an abandoned hardware store. I took this opportunity to look for more supplies, but unfortunately the creatures, those walking human remains that I will call zombies from now on for lack of a better word, had taken over the hardware store. So I took care of a few of them, took what I could find and left for the trading post. Just down the road from the hardware store I found what was to have been the trading post. Holding out at the trading post was Chen, a trained doctor who told me a lot about Navasgain County and the current situation. She was friendly, but is normal in a situation like the one we were finding ourselves in. She was not giving me any help for free. I was desperate for supplies and money, so I decided to play along and run a few errands for her. Apparently, other survivors had done the same and failed miserably. The first job took me in what seemed like the burnt remains of a forest. On my way to the place Chen had sent me, I encountered more zombies, some of them burned to the point of being unrecognizable. Yet, they were moving. A pride opened the door to what must have been a family home once and looked through their kitchen and pantry to find food and other useful supplies. Never has anything felt so wrong, but the owners were gone or had already joined the hordes of the wandering dead, so I did what needed to be done. When I finally made my way to the house where the supplies were supposed to be, I made my way up to the roof and quietly whisked away the supplies to bring them back to Jen. Jen was generous and handed me a few casino tokens, apparently what passes for currencies in these times, as well as two packs of rifle ammo. Always useful, especially if there's zombies out to get you. You look like you could handle yourself. One I had a good feeling about you. Good luck. 
As the sun was setting, I wandered up the hill, across from the trading station, carrying the supplies and materials I had scavenged during the day, and proceeded to build a place for me to stay, off the ground so that bugs and ticks wouldn't bite me, and build out of the sturdiest materials I had found so that the zombies wouldn't tear it down in a couple of seconds. Running down the hill to get the last of my supplies to my base, I stumbled and sprained my leg, an injury that would come to haunt me during this adventure. Dragging myself up the hill one last time for the day, I wondered how I would get out of this misery. In my desperation, I fabricated some kind of gun out of the materials I had gathered during the day. It was better than nothing, I assured myself as I went to sleep. The second day, I did not really know how to proceed. It was probably best to build up a working relationship with Chen, as she was the only human not turned into a walking corpse in the whole area. So I decided to work for her and earn a few rewards. The first mission took me to an abandoned ranger station overlooking a beautiful lake. How nice it must have been to work here before everything went downhill. I made my way into the compound and tried to climb the watchtower. But I got tangled in the branches of a tree and overlooked the missing plank and fell down hurting my ankle again. This considerably slowed me down for the rest of the day. Clenching my teeth every time I jumped over a small ledge, I finally made my way up the tower. I couldn't take my time to take in the view. Zombies had infested the top of the tower too. After clearing the zombies out, I found a couple of steroids in a shipping crate. I knew that you were pretty much impervious to pain when on the right high, so I figured I had little to lose and took them to be able to walk straight. I didn't know I was gonna be on roids for the better part of the next three weeks though. Now that you have some money to spend? We're running a Getting the reward from Jen felt day. good, but knowing she operated that vending machine in her yard and knowing that I'd be spending most of my hard-earned dukes with soon. her a left a slight bad here. taste in my mouth. Anyway, I had no other choice, so I proceeded to do jobs for her. Clearing out the house for her, for her from zombies, God only knows what she was planning to do with that piece of real estate. Oh, 
Luckily I brought some bandages, otherwise I might not have made it back to her. She gave me a good reward, but right away sent me on another quest. Like Dr. Jen. I would love to give you a job. Do hurry. I have a protection payment coming up soon. Not everything went to plan, though. It seemed her errands were quickly getting more complicated. No wonder she had lost so many employees before. Trying to avoid getting hit by that zombie I sprained my leg again. Also the bruise he gave me started to get infected quickly. I had to do something about this. After limping slowly back to the trading post, I treated my infected wound with honey. It's not high tech, but it helped cure the infection. Don't spend it all in one place. But if you do, make sure it's here. Oh, this is the best way to get to- I had a good feeling about you. Good luck! After hauling most of the stuff I had found during the day up the hill, the sprained leg Hurting like hell and no roids available to take my mind off the pain, I sat down and fabricated some kind of forge from the supplies I had scavenged. I urgently needed some better arrowheads. Also I made myself some additional pouches for my jacket. Carrying all these supplies in the backpack had made my back hurt. That evening I ventured out to the burnt forest city once more. Chan had told me stories about a legendary adventurer who used to work for her before, who went by the name of Cap. He had since moved on, but Chan told me that not long ago he lived in the tall building on the edge of town. I climbed that building to see whether he had left some usable items there and I was not disappointed. Unfortunately, zombies had since retaken the building, but I dealt with them shortly. As I made my way back to my makeshift home, I thought back on what Chen had told me about Cap. Other than her apparently having a serious crush on him, she told me she remembered him living at a farmhouse not far up north. I must have passed not far from that house when I made my way towards the trading post. So I decided to pay that house a visit in the morning. So at daybreak of day 3, I set out to find that farmhouse and see whether I could find Cap or any of his tools and supplies there. Avoiding all zombies on my way, I finally came upon the farmhouse. And sure enough, there were still signs of Cap there. He had left a 4x4 and a motorcycle in the driveway. Unfortunately, I could get neither to run. <laughs> I 
Also, there was a large supplies crate standing close to the vehicles. So I pried it open and was very happy with what was inside. Finders keepers, I guess. I went to look inside the building to see if I could find any clues as to where Cap could have gone or where he left his considerable fortune. But wasn't able to find anything except zombies and a few bits and pieces that Cap may or may not have left in there. Unable to find any more clues, I set off back home. At least the new weapons were going to help a lot going forward. I loaded my haul off at my base. It was still early in the day and I figured I could get a few more things done. Trader Jan had given me another job the day before, and while not overly keen on risking my health for her, I badly needed more supplies to someday get out of this predicament. The supplies her courier had lost were quickly recovered. I did not bother to think about whether one of the burned corpses was actually a former employee of hers. Jan was really pleasant to be around, but I couldn't stop questioning her motives. She was living in the middle of an apocalypse and yet all she cared about was money. Yet I took another job from her. Again, one of her employees had lost important supplies. After having retrieved them, I got a bit greedy though. Somewhat better equipped, but again, with a seriously festering wound, I made my way back to Jen. Hello, now that you have some money to spend? We're running a 10% off sale for the rest of the day. You look into Although she gave me my reward as promised, she still wanted me to pay for medicine. Apparently, this job did not come with any kind of health insurance. Her next job took me west again, back to that beautiful lake I had seen from the ranger station.
Jen's quest being done, I proceeded to go through some of the houses near the lake. Surely survivors like Cap must have liked the scenery too and possibly have stayed at these places. Maybe I could find some clues. But no matter where I looked, I did not find anything. So I finally decided to head back to Jen and collect my reward. This time she surprised me and offered me some extra reward. Maybe she wasn't so bad after all. That bicycle was going to help me a whole lot getting around. And maybe escaping this nightmare. Hey son, I knew you wouldn't let me down. Also, well then, also, she showed me the way to yet another trading post. A trader named Hugh apparently operated the trading post up north. But I wasn't going there the same day. The sun was already setting and I wanted to upgrade my base a little bit before retiring to bed. The next morning I set out before sunrise to get things done. I wanted to go back to that farmhouse where I found the gear left there by Cap and to see whether I had overlooked any hints as to where he had gone or where his legendary fortune was buried. I still didn't see any further clues nor could I start the vehicles. So when a shrieking creature turned up, it was still night time, I paddled on to Dyersville, a small township close to the farm. Jenna told me of numerous activities Cap had had in Dyersville. I drove down the main road where I was told Cap did some drag racing back in the day. I saw an abandoned hospital which I knew could hide something important. None the wise, I decided to leave the town again and look through the working stiff tools shop once more. I cleared the backyard and the roof of zombies and looked through the storage area, at this point looking for some tools. I had been a mechanic in a past life and I wanted to build myself some form of motorized transport. Most of the tools had already been looted though, and I was left with a few bits and pieces as well as some building materials. After storing away the building supplies, I went to Jen and got offered another job. Well, look what the cat dragged in. Sorry, but I've never heard of a stim pack. We're always looking for some adventure. I had a good feeling about you. Good luck. Before doing that though, I decided it was time to sift through the barn opposite the farmhouse. Maybe Cap had left something there. 
I was greeted by a group of zombies apparently guarding nothing more than a few odds and ends and a lot of building materials which of course I took home. Afterwards, I went up north to the snowy mountains to meet with you, the trader. Maybe he had more information of how to get away from here or about Cap's whereabouts. Trader Hugh was talkative, but a lot less likable than Jen. So I suppose you want to be paid. He gave me a job too, but I wasn't too keen on helping that son of a gun out. So I went back to Dyersville, intent of finding tools or signs of cap. I went through a few houses and there definitely had been survivors living in there. But they were long gone or had been turned into shambling corpses roaming the streets. In the end I gave up and rode back to Trader Jen to spend all the cash I had worked for for the past few days on the tool I so desperately needed. Meds, drugs, booze. I've got it all. Remember me if you need medical supplies. Late at night I ventured out once more to scavenge all the parts I would be needing for that vehicle I was planning to build. Loaded with components, I finally got home late at night. Frustrated yet determined to find Cap or to get out of this mess, I fell asleep. <laughs> 